Hello friends and welcome to my very first Sketch With Me session. Today I'll be using the Arteza watercolour sketchbook. This is a very new sketchbook and I'm really excited to use it. So today I'm going to be drawing a whole bunch of corgis. So grab your sketchbook, grab a cup of tea and sketch with me. You're also welcome to just chill out and enjoy the video. For all the sketches that you see today, I actually found them on Pinterest and I have them all tagged on my board. So if you would like to sketch along with me, you're more than welcome to check that out. I think what appealed to me most about this particular reference was that this is a close up of a corgi and he's giving those classic puppy dog eyes which no one can resist. I didn't go too much into detail in terms of the shading but that was just because I was thinking of revisiting this drawing and maybe turning it into a painting. So you'll see that throughout my sketches in this particular video. Most people think that corgis come in one or two colour schemes, but when it comes to a corgi, they come in quite a variety of different colours, such as sable and tricoloured and fawn. So I found this particular reference with a lot darker markings with fawn and lighter shades and brown. So I thought it was a really interesting corgi to draw. If you're new here and you're enjoying the video so far, don't forget to subscribe. I'd also love to hear from you your thoughts on this video as I'd love to engage with you guys. And also don't forget to like this video. That would be really helpful for me as a creator to know that you like this sort of content. So thanks in advance. And now on with the rest of the video. I've never really drawn many corgis before but I thought it would be really good to try and practice their side profile. They have the cutest little legs and I thought it would be a good thing to capture. So I started out by marking out the basic shapes and then using those as a reference to fill out the rest of the corgi. This one I didn't particularly like as much, um, I think it just looked a bit too rough for me or <laughs> rough um <laughs> that was not intentional but i don't know to me it looked a bit more like a sausage dog and again i was just thinking that i might paint it in the future so i didn't want to add too much details with this fourth corgi whenever i search for corgi whether it be etsy or google it seems like everyone has a massive fascination with their corgi butts. <laughs> Apparently they just look like a big loaf of bread, which is kind of understandable why. But yeah, I just thought I couldn't get away with drawing some corgis without drawing one. So yeah, I hope you enjoy this particular drawing. It was quite simple, but I enjoy drawing it. I am a bit of a fact buff, so I will be sharing a few bits about corgis throughout this video and I hope you'll enjoy them. I think it's just important to know a bit about your reference. It just makes it more than just a photo and it brings it to life. There are actually two different distinct breeds of corgis. There is the Pembroke Welsh Corgi and the Cardigan Welsh Corgi. They are considered to be two entirely different breeds because they come from different ancestors. With this next corgi, I drew one in a lying down pose. Again, it had more of the darker colours, so I've just been trying to sketch these out. With each of these corgis, I've had a slightly different approach in terms of where I start. I usually just sketch out the first little features and then try and space everything else relative to my first markings. Apparently 
The name corgi itself actually derives from Welsh language, where cor is from the word dwarf, and gi means essentially dog, so dwarf dog, which explains why they're sort of this little cute munchkin size. I guess it's a logical name for them. Apparently in Welsh mythology, folklore suggests that the breed was actually an enchanted dog and that fairies and elves employed by the fairy kingdom. The fairy would use them as mounds and literally ride them as herd on herders, making them truly enchanting. <laughs> Could you imagine a little fairy riding on these little corgis to war? That would be pretty funny to think about. This next particular corgi I wasn't too proud of, but I just can't help not filling a page. I think the sketches collectively are more powerful when they're all put together. I used to, in my sketchbooks, just draw a single thing and just have loads of white space, but there's actually something quite powerful about filling a space and it's more impactful. As I was drawing most of these corgis, I realised quite a lot of them look like huskies, especially the one on the bottom right. And I never really thought that their facial features do sort of resemble huskies. I thought it was just my drawing, but I found out that they actually, some of them share ancestries with huskies. So maybe that's why, <laughs> especially this one. I definitely thought I looked more on the husky side, but maybe it's just my drawing skills, who knows. <laughs> this one I drew at an angle, so I thought it was good to get a 360 perspective of a corgi. So mainly drawing <laughs> the front and obviously the back profile next to it. But yeah, this one I think was a puppy, so it had much more of younger features to it, so like chunkier legs and a pronounced snout. So I started off again by sketching those basic outlines and then using my original lines to then carve out the rest of the corgi shape. And then filling in the shading, especially getting the dark areas in the ears. This final corgi, I thought that it's not really art without thinking about how to make it fun. So I thought I'd have a bit of fun with this one. This is actually the first reference that I found on Pinterest and it was just too funny not to draw. <laughs> it's basically like a corgi with a shocked face, which you'll see at the end. And I think you've probably seen in the thumbnail as well. But what's up if you can't have a bit of fun with it? So I hope you really enjoy this little last drawing. This time I started out with not drawing the face first, actually drawing everything but the face first, but I eventually fleshed out the face. I thought the face was really important and was what captured his character. So I hope you enjoy this last sketch. I'll be doing a few more of these sketch with me sessions, so be on the lookout for the next few ahead. I look forward to seeing you there, but this is the final outcome. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!